Hello everybody and welcome to the British Pint. My name is Christoph and today we're tasting another batch of Fuller's ESB as I did it exactly a year ago as the first video on my channel and also the Fuller's London Porter because um, why not? So there are a lot of things that I read in the past uh, six weeks uh, that these have been fermenting and maturing and I wanted to, before we try these, delve a bit into the details because if you want to get very accurate in the recipe there are just so many details that you can explore. One of the things is how they actually treat the water. So in the Twitter screenshot that you can see from the recipe that um, that I, I think I shared in the, in the last video description, the link, you can see that they actually add calcium sulfide in uh, as 1.33 grams per kilogram malt, which is quite a bizarre thing. So depending on how much malt they use, they also scale their calcium sulfate. I'm not sure what the size is behind there, and um, I didn't yet calculate how much calcium sulfate that would be for the respective uh, water. But from there you could, if you want to be very accurate, get the most accurate water. Now, um, the fermentation on these worked quite well. I because it was winter, I managed to actually scale everything quite nicely. So the water that came out of my tap is colder. I could cool the wort down further. I could actually pitch at 17 degrees. I let it warm up to 20 degrees room temperature. I can't control the liquid in the fermentation. And you might have seen in the last video that I probably did quite an overpitching because everything bubbled out of the fermenter. Um, so it might have been warmer during that time. And then I chilled it down quite quite quickly, basically a day after it was forming as much, it subdued and slowly, uh, yeah, slowed down. So I, I turned down the heat in that room and everything got a bit chiller. So that was 17 degrees in the room then. And then I actually put it outside because it was really cold outside at the time. That worked fine for my uh, cold crash. And it was at around 3.5% residual gravity. So that's 1014. And um, yeah, that was the fermentation basically. Now, <clears throat> I read in a very nice thread on the homebrew talk, which I'm going to put in the video description, about the general fermentation of British ales, that uh, a lot of people have very good uh, results with this fermentation um, schedule. So pitching a bit colder, letting it warm up, but also cooling it down towards the end, so that the yeast doesn't clean up the beer too much, and so that you get a lot of esters, a lot of malt character and yeast character in the beer. And uh, for many people this works really well, but also what they mention is that there's a risk with the fuller strain, and that is that it can start to ferment too much, and then it creates a kind of apple or cidery taste. Now, during bottling, I did notice that there is some apple smell that I noticed. I'm a bit scared for these. And also they didn't just attenuate towards 3% uh, final gravity, so that would be 10-12. They actually went further down, so it was 2.1% for the Fuller's London Porter and 2.45% for the Fuller's ESB. I'll um, put the data on when I describe each beer individually. But the, the, the problem is that I might actually have had this effect. Now, some nobody knows where this effect comes from. Some people say it happens when you add sugar. I didn't do that. I just put them in, the, in my party cakes. <laughs> So I like to use these five liter kegs and then uh, just keep them there for maturation. I also did for the Fuller's ESB the second dry hopping in here. If you remember the dry hopping in both cases was, uh, so one, one during the cold crash and one during maturation was with Target to get that lemony aroma and it actually during bottling smelled a lot like lemon so that was fine. It used to be Golding which has more of a lime flavor but the newest recipe that I found was with Target. Now. Um, in here, they can actually stay quite well for a long time. I, I did do that also cold because Fuller's specifies the maturation at 10 degrees. I did it in the cellar. It has around 12 degrees roughly. On some days a bit more, on some days a bit less. And uh, yeah, the, the bottling, I usually do that through the, um, the tap here. The problem was that because of these hop leaves in here, because I use cone hops, actually it got clogged a bit and the bottling was quite a pain. So I'm not sure if dry hopping in the keg is something I want to do in the future, even with pellets. If um, if I do it in the fermenter and some pellets actually, or some, some particles of hop go into the keg, it can get really difficult to, to bottle it. So that's a bit annoying. And then um, I have this risk of getting some apple flavor, which is not the green apple 
aroma. I sometimes get that from bottom fermented yeast sediment. The sediment sometimes smells a bit like green apple, and I know that from an off-flavor se seminar what exactly the smell is. It's like that uh, artificial fruit, like gummy bears and stuff like that, that apple flavor. But the one that you get here is actually really clearly red apple. Um, different flavor from the other one. I, I can understand why people call it a bit cidery, because it just it seems a bit more natural, the apple, and less artificial. So it might be a different compound, no idea where it comes from, nobody really seems to know. Now the yeast I used was the Imperial uh, Yeast A09 pub ale, and uh, there is actually a, a note somewhere where someone asked uh, the Imperial Yeast Laboratories what exactly their source was, and they specified that they had a sample from the 80s that was at some point taken from bottle conditioned beer, and that could be the same as everyone else uses. But there are people who say that the Imperial Yeast one, um, which is of course the, the newest brand compared to the Y-Yeast and the White Labs one, is the strongest one in giving that orange marmalade character. Now something that I remembered, last year I did this in a much more simplified way, and that was with, with the Bulldog Brews B4, English Ale is the name of that dried yeast. And you know, on the internet most people think that because it's called B4, it's probably just a repackaged SO4, Cephal. And I don't think that's the case, because the Cephal SO4, while I haven't compared them side by side, uh, it actually tastes much more neutral, and the Bulldog Brews did actually give me a very clear orange marmalade flavor. So I'm wondering now whether the Bulldog, whether Bulldog Brews actually is the only um, vendor of a dry yeast fuller strain, which would be amazing for a lot of people who use uh, dried yeast only. So if you have any information on that, please let me know in the comments. I might register to the Homebrew Talk forum and ask them there, because that seems to be the, like an interesting detail that nobody picks up. The flavor was really orange marmalade, I remember that vividly. Even um, on very simple beers, you always would get something orangey. Okay, so that's with the yeast. Um, you know the fermentation, I could get an off flavor, which I didn't get in the dried yeast, but I could get an off flavor here because it over attenuated and it might be exactly that what people described as unfortunate and yeah, what else is there to know? I get more alcohol than I should. 5.9% um, for the Fuller's ESP was my target. I'm over 6% now. Um, I'll show you the data on the screen. So the, the problem was that I had, I think, the right original gravity, if I remember correctly, and then uh, it over attenuated. And for the other one, I did have, I believe, also the right um, original gravity, and it went down to 2.1% gravity, so I think this one is close to 6%, this one is over 6%, 6.5 maybe. Can't remember right now, you'll see it on the screen. So yeah, let's try them. I did store these bottles at 11 degrees, so I have a fridge dedicated to my English ale now, and I just do this to get the most flavor out of them, because this it's reminiscent of what cask ale would be stored at. What could be is that if the bottles are over, or not over carbonated, but carbonated more than you would get it from a cask, then it could be that it's a bit more fizzy now. But I'm not even sure what exactly the combination of my beers will be. It always depends on the bottling process. In the keg they have um, 2.5 bars, and that is, I think, 5.5 grams per liter at 20 degrees, but because these matured at more 12 degrees, it will be a bit higher, and then I lose some during bottling. So let's see. We'll start with the, mm, I think, with the less alcohol one, with the London Porter just because the hoppy one will probably be more intense. <laughs> okay, good zish on both, on both, good, nice sound. I don't have the same glasses four times, so I'll just do it like this. Different glass for the portal and for the ESB. I actually do smell some apple. Oh, I'm, so, I'm really scared whether I got that off flavor. Okay, that's surprising. Why is mine so pale? Did I use the right bottle? Let me just check. Yeah, this one's paler. That's strange, isn't it? So I used the chocolate mold and the brown mold that they specify, but the color is really pale. That would be like uh, 50 EBC maybe? 60, 70? Something like that. I'll have to check that with the other bottles. If I'm unlucky, then I just took two bottles of full of ESB. No, it's darker than the other one. That's really strange. I'm certain I used 
exactly the right recipe because that is the standard one from the Brew Your Own British Real Ale. Ha! Huh. I didn't expect that. Not sure how to proceed now, but I'm, I'm going to taste them. Okay, let's see. What is the Fuller's London Porter like? Very caramelly. Quite sweetish. Reminiscent of uh, maple syrup. And there's a darker note um, that reminds me of the Fuller's Imperial Stout that I recently tried for the 100 subscriber special that I did a few weeks ago. Yeah, not that chocolatey in the smell. If I compare that to the meantime beers that were the last beers that I did, that one was much more chocolatey with a lot of different malts. This one is more fruity, more syrupy, more caramelly. Mm. Okay, roasted notes, mm, some chocolate. Still quite sweet in nature. So remember, these have 3% final gravity, so 1012, which makes them much sweeter. Um, so if the yeast behaves properly, it actually leaves a lot of residual gravity in there. Um, yeah, not too long lingering the flavor. It's a bit of a bitterness that keeps going, but it's a very light one. Feels quite nicely rounded off, so it's a more easy drinking ale, doesn't cling or anything. Just a bit of roastness, chocolateness, then the sweetness, nice malt sweetness with the uh, fruity notes, and then you get the uh, the, the, the light bitterness in the end. And of course, because there's quite some caramel in there as well, it's also quite uh, resiny. So you you have raisins in there and uh, some toffee, yeah, something like that. So let's see mine. Oh, that's actually very similar. Yeah, I can't say I smell apple. It does have a fruitiness, which is slightly different. So it's a bit of raisin, but it, um, it's less intense, so it doesn't, it's not that overwhelming maple syrup smell. But a lot of the elements are in there. I still don't understand why it's so pale. Did I actually accidentally use some, some incorrect chocolate mold or something? Maybe pale, pale chocolate mold? Yeah, I haven't watched the video from the brew day yet. Maybe I can see some details on there. Yeah, but the smell is actually quite similar, so that's nice. There might be some apple flavor in there, but there's also a very slight roasted malt in there. Not much, just very slightly roasted. And then a lot of the fruitiness. So it that's really different, actually. So I'm not sure what happened there. This is, I have to say, I'm quite dumbfounded. Can you see how pale it is here, if I put the light in front? No idea why. I could have sworn that it was different during bottling. I bottled these two weeks ago, and of course, if there's a chemical reaction that's happening of, because of this apple flavor, maybe that also destroys color. Maybe. That would be the only guess I could make. Yeah, there's some apple in there. Together with the caramel and the raisins and everything else. So, this is probably, well, I didn't do the London Porter last year, but uh, this is definitely one of the worst beers I've done so far in terms of accuracy accuracy of, of, of something that I cloned. Okay, let's go to the Fuller's ESB and hope for a better result. Yeah, nice carbonation. This one foams a lot better than the uh, London Porter. It's also much hoppier, so it makes sense. And they behave very similarly, so that's encouraging. Okay, so in terms of color, mine is a bit cloudier, so like a chill haze, and that's why it's paler. But in general terms, not sure I should hold them the same way. In general terms, I, I would say very closely similar. Maybe I should have put some chocolate mold in there to, to adjust the color exactly to what they use here. They use 0.2% chocolate mold on the brewery notes that you could find online. But as they say in the interview, they actually changed the percentage of chocolate mold so that they always get the right color. This is a nice dark golden color that looks golden in most angles, but a bit darker 
almost coppery in others. Mm -hmm. So something that happens when you use the bottled beer, and this one is definitely not the freshest. You know, in Germany you don't get that that fresh ale easily. It's uh, best before July, so that's three months from now. That's still fine, but the hop flavors uh, or aromas are never really pre present. I smell a lot of toffee, a lot of caramel, very similar to this one, but less intense. A bit more fruitiness. No apple flavor in the original here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Hoppy taste. A bit of caramel, no raisins, nothing like that. Just um, very mild hoppiness. It doesn't taste, actually taste very bitter. I remember this one to be more bitter sometimes. Not sure how long the best before date usually is. If it's six months, then this is still a good sample. If it's 12 months, then this must be an ancient one. I got it from an online shop. So, um, yeah, it's it's actually quite nice. I don't taste much of an orange this time. I remember when I bought this one in the UK, I got a lot of orange flavor. Actually, really closely to orange marmalade. I get a very faint note of orange now. It's more like, like orange honey, so something that's very sweet and lingering and there's a bit of orange in there, but much, much more subdued than what I'm used to. So that just so you know what kind of sample, uh, like commercial, uh, how do you call that, commercial calibration I have here. Now let's see what mine does. Okay, that's very hoppy. Lemon, but also a bit of actual hop resin. Not raisin, but resin. Mm-hmm. I can smell a bit of caramel as well, a bit of toffee. Yeah, it tastes very nice. There's a bit of apple in there as well. So whatever I did, I did systematically. And it does have a good hoppiness, which probably masks some of the problems that I have with the other one. It does have a decent caramel basis, so it does taste quite malty and everything. I think the intensity of the malt is the same, which is something that I also managed to do last year. The maltiness is very similar. The hoppiness is very different, but in this case, this one just doesn't have a lot of hoppiness left. So I might I might just have to go to the UK and try this one on tap. This one is actually quite nice and hoppy and might be very similar to what I remember. I remember that the hoppiness itself wasn't very orangey or fruity. It was more like a bit of piney, a bit of uh, herbal, and then you have this smell. It's very lightly lemony, but um, yeah, there's this apple note in there, and that's probably a big, big issue for me, because that's I would consider this as an off flavor. You don't want to have an extra apple note in there, which um, actually so so from from the point of view that I got this off flavor so easily without using any sugar. I would actually say that that dried yeast from Bulldog Brew is much, much easier to handle and uh, gives better accuracy with this beer. Okay, it's been a week now since I tasted my two beers and I have pondered whether the Fuller's ESB was right or not. And to um, kind of find out again, I, I did actually buy another bottle. This one is from a regional shop. It's uh, best before September, so two months fresher. And I also believe that it is stored much better there. And then I also have my own version prepared here. So what I did notice when I re-drank both beers is that the Fuller's London Porter is actually very, very apple flavory, but the ESB doesn't have that. So I would give the ESB another chance today and see if it is actually quite close to a proper commercial sample. And then at least that part might be positive while the other isn't. It's a bit difficult to understand why this apple flavor happened because both beers were fermented the same way. They got almost exactly the same amount of yeast. Maybe the, the porter was slightly more overpitched. Both of them were quite overpitched. That's why I, did, why I didn't get the orange flavor. Um, I'm, I'm going to compare these also in, with respect to that. But mostly, there's barely any difference. None of them got sugar. None of them, uh, both of them just fermented down to their residual, final gravities. And yeah, that's so it's it's all very confusing. Now what I'm do, gonna do is just try the ESB, see how close that is, give you some feedback regarding that, 
and then probably not uh, worry too much about the porter where the recipe is quite simple and actually there's less that can go wrong so I'm, I'm not sure I'm still not sure why things happen the way they did we'll see I definitely know that the um, the fuller's yeast is actually quite a tricky one so when I first read about it that it's difficult because you can get that apple cider flavor I was underestimating it quite a lot and I think now I'm more careful okay I'm going to check the color again just to be sure I take everything into account. So mine is slightly paler and also uh, chill haze from the protein, but that's okay. Mine foams a bit more, could be that there's a bit more hop, especially bitter hopping in it. I'll try the commercial sample first and then tell you about it. Ah, okay, this one smells very different. Full orange marmalade smell, toffee as well, very dark toffee-ish, slightly burnt caramel. Mm. Yeah, so the smell of that orange marmalade is really there. Not too much of bitterness, but it, it starts uh, lingering in the mouth. You have a lot of caramel flavors that stay there, and after all the caramel flavors are gone and the marmalade flavor is gone, you have that lingering bitterness, which is, I think, was 35 IBU, and that's really not too much for this beer. It's very sweet. Uh, sweeter than I remember, to be honest. I remember that this was one of the beers in the UK that I liked more because it was less sweet than most of the others, but bottled beers in the UK are always a problem and if you can you should always drink cask ales. Okay, so that is how the beer is supposed to taste. Let's see what this one is like. Okay, this one smells much more hoppy and I think it's the North Down that I smell because it's a very grassy hoppiness. It could also be could be the dry hop, depending on how the dry hop ages, because this is now one week older, so it's three weeks since bottling. It was quite a long maturation time. It could be that the lemoniness is slowly going. I do not smell and taste any dry hop in there, but I do know that they dry hop their maturation tank before bottling, so there should be some. And I think this is again something that I'm only going to really be able to judge once I get it from cask. Okay, so underneath the hop, there's quite a lot of estuary smells, but it's not the apple, which is very nice. North Down can have a slight apple smell, so it might be that that is what I picked up last time. I would actually say that there's definitely the same toffiness. It seems to be not quite as dark, I would say, but that could be because maybe my malt wasn't the freshest. The caramel malt that I got from someone. And there, there might be a slight orangey note in here as well. Yeah, so caramel, very similar actually. It lingers also the same amount. Much less orange marmalade flavor though. That is uh, the biggest difference. And that is, I think, because I pitched too high. So I think my recipes actually sound except for the, the amount of hops I add. So I would reduce the aroma hops slightly. Now, I, I can't remember whether I... I, I got it from, from the, the official recipe, obviously, but... It's always difficult to understand where the bitterness comes from and depending on where your bitterness comes from you scale the hops differently and um, the ratio between the aroma hops golding north down and challenger is always the same but um, you could either use lots of aroma hops and li a little bit of hop or the other way around so the question is whether i did too much aroma hopping and also the dry hop is very prominent in my beer and not at all in the in the bottled version so that is a bit difficult to judge I really love the lemon smell when I when I bottled these, but it's almost gone already. So I would say um, it might have been overdone. And I think the additional bitterness that I get from this one is slightly more bitter than the other one. That is from the dry hop, which I didn't take into account when I calculated 35 IBU. And that is because no calculator anywhere gives you what uh, gives you the amount of dry hopping that you need to take for a certain IBU because it depends on the hop variety. It depends on the time, of course, that it stays in there, that was four weeks, was, no, it was six weeks of maturation time with dry hop in there. So, um, there, yeah. So, if you want to be more accurate, you could leave away the dry hop and then maybe scale down the aroma hop slightly, depending on how you have your goal uh, wherever you are. So, the, the flavor of the commercial sample, obviously, depends on how fresh you get it. 
what kind of um, journey it had and so on. But I think there's actually a really good clone and it's very close and the recipe is very sound and it's actually not apple whereas my porter, for whatever reason, was having that off flavor. And I think apart from that, the porter wasn't actually too far off either, but it was very difficult to determine with that prominent cider taste. So that is then how, where I would close this discussion and say that the recipes are very sound. I'm very, um, very, um, very certain of the recipes, but it can be difficult to get a proper commercial sample, as, I did, as you saw uh, in the beginning of this video. And it can be very difficult to, uh, to judge the dry hop, and also the yeast seems to be tricky. So it is a very challenging beer. And I'm really looking forward to see, uh, tasting the cask version of these one day. Um, yeah, and that would be it. And then I'll see you next time around when there's another video coming up. Bye-bye.